Hallelujah. Give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. I've been ready to see you this day, but uh, I haven't had an opportunity to sing all the week. And Timex came up Friday. Um, I had to go to the hospital. I was there for about six hours before they let me go. My um, blood pressure went up to 229. Oh, and uh, we thought I would help stroke, so I basically let me stay there until they got it down. So they finally got it down to 79. He gave me a new medicine for my uh, blood pressure. And it worked real good. So um, I was able to get it down to 145 yesterday morning. All right. Good. It's down there like it, like it should be. So um, I'm just glad that, like she said, that God works with us, you know, and yes. we just have to believe and, and yes. help yes. us. Yes. Trust yes. And, uh, Trust I didn't get a chance to press on the CD, so um, I'm going to play off the pillow like they did. No, that's all right. You know it's, it's well with our soul. I'm, 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 I'm getting it off the music here instead of playing it from my head. All right. You're worthy, Lord. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. chapter and starting at uh, verse number 
one. Um, it says, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. He comes forth like a flower and is cut down. He flees also as a shadow and continues not. And does thou open thine eyes upon such an one, and bringeth me into judgment with thee? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean, not one? Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Turn from him that he may rest till he shall accomplish as a howling his day. For there is hope of a tree if it be cut down that it will sprout again and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stalk thereof die in the ground, yes, through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth flowers like a, a plant. Notice what he said. He said all they got to do is smell the scent of water, and the plant will come back. But man dies, wastes away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? As the waters fell from the sea, and the flood decayeth and drieth up, so man lies down and rises not, till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake, nor the, be raised out of their sleep. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be passed, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. Then finally, verse 14, Moses, I mean, Job asks, of course, he said, if a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. All right, Amen. you may be seated. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. I want to talk today from the subject death is not so bad if you're ready. Death is not so bad if you're ready. Like most of us, on last Sunday, January the 26th, 2020, around 3 o'clock p.m., the news, if you're watching TV, the news broke in, mm -hmm. and they shared with the world that yeah. famous basketball player Kobe Bryant had been killed in a helicopter crash. And as the news began to spread, many people did not want to believe it. Say, it's got to be fake news. It's got to be uh, unreal. This cannot happen. This is not realistic. And, and people were sorry that Kobe had left and died in a plane crash. But as they began to talk, first of all, they said there were five people on the helicopter. And then as the day went on, they began to say there were nine people on the helicopter. And then they reported that Kobe's daughter was among those who had crashed in that accident. So I don't know about anybody else, but I, I, I usually don't get too caught up on celebrities' death. I don't, you know, when, when Whitney died and everything, I didn't get all upset like many people did. But for some reason or another, and I'm not a real big fan of Kobe. I didn't follow him like some of you may have followed him, but, but it was something about his death that made me think about death and think about life in general. Can I get a witness here? Now, uh, I, I, I often
often see, you know, sometimes people say when they see a hearse driving, it reminds them of death. But one thing I think we need to flip that around, when you see a hearse, it ought to remind you of life. Yeah, yeah. Now, why do you say that? Because you're not in it. Come right. on, somebody. Right. Uh, I had a friend years ago, co-worker, who used to say that, uh, they asked him, how was he doing? He said, I could be better. I could be worse. Yes. I could be riding in the back of a hearse. Mm -hmm. So when you think about where you could be and where where you uh, uh, were and, and, and could be and all of that. But 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 I was just dealing with a lot of death this week. I had We had to bury one of our deputy sheriffs uh, from Rockdale County. And, and, and this is what, what bothered me about his death, my brothers and sisters, was that he just went to, uh, uh, to the doctor, and I won't call the name of the people, uh, but he went to this group of people, and they told him he had the flu. And this was like on Tuesday. Thursday morning he got up, could not breathe hardly, and he was in ICU. Mm. And they said he had the flu. But there was more to that than, than just the flu. So I tell anybody now that if, if they tell you you just got the flu, you better tell them that you better make sure, check more. Don't just assume and just send me back home uh, 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 and saying that that's all I got. But, you know, about 30, less than 30 days later, I get a call or text one, and they said that, and this happened on December 27th, all of this, rushing them to the hospital and all of that. Well, Friday, I mean Saturday, I think that was around January the 25th, that evening, he had gone. So when I start thinking about all of this, my brothers and sisters, I... I, I, I wasn't so much about afraid of death and dying. My, my concern was, you know, different opportunities that, that I could have missed doing something with my loved ones, but, but God put it on my heart to do the right thing. And, and I want to go back when I was about 20 years old. My, I can't had come home from, from college, and, and uh, my grandfather needed to go back to Atlanta to to see the doctor, then come back. And, and, and let's just look at it real simply. Uh, when I came home, that was 25 miles that I drove. And that was gas that I had to use up. And then he wanted me to take him to the doctor, and that would be 25 miles back to Atlanta, and then another 25 miles back home, and then another 25 miles to go back to Mars Brown. I didn't want to do that. That would have been about 100 miles in one day. So we called him Papa. Papa said, look like you wouldn't mind saving your mother a trip mm -hmm. and take me up to the hospital. And, 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 and you know, I, to be honest with you, I was okay with mother taking it. <laughs> I didn't have no problem with mother taking it because mother was just going to go up there and she was going to come back. But if I went, I was going to go, come back, go, and all that kind of stuff. But then he put a hook in it. He said to me, this may be the last time I ever ask you to do anything for me. Well, he put that guilt trip on me then. So regardless of what I was thinking about or, or, or wanted to do, I said, okay, Papa, let's get in the car. Let's drive to Atlanta. Let's see the doctor. Let's come back home, and then I'll drive back and get to band practice a little bit later on and everything. Well, I told you that story for this reason. I told you that story because that was the last time that I was able to do anything for him. It was the last time that he asked me to do anything. And, and, and so many times, my brothers and sisters, I... I have thought about the fact that what if I had not yes. taken him yes. to the doctor? I, I, I would be, even today, I would still be regretting uh, if I had, uh, if I just had done it. And now today that I'm happy uh, about this. But then another story happened around October the 15th, 1995. We, we had taken my cousin's son up to Flint, Michigan to um, General Motors Institute because he was interested in going to school there. And uh, we made a few stops. We stopped 
coming back in Detroit to, uh, to visit my brother-in-law. He was living in Detroit at the time. We left there. We came to Columbus, Ohio, and my mother's younger sister had uh, cooked a big feast. It was like Thanksgiving or something. And, then, and so we, we finished eating. It was probably about 9 o'clock at night. I know we shouldn't have been eating that late, but, you know, our man had done fixed all that food. We couldn't let that food go to waste. Amen. And so we left there, and we went over to Bobby's house. Bobby is her son. And, and we got up the next morning, and, and I wanted to get on the road because we were traveling from Columbus, Ohio, to Orangeboro, Kentucky, to see our cousin Deborah. And, I, 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 you know, I kind of wanted to, to get home. And, and so uh, uh, Bobby's wife, Mary, insisted that the male cousins take a picture. And we, I didn't want to take no picture if it, Bobby and, and Michael was over there. They wanted to see us off and everything. She insisted that we take this group picture. All right. So I stayed and I sucked it in and, mm -hmm. and took the picture. Yeah. Well, I don't know how many months it was later. I was driving down to Peace Chapel Baptist Church to, to participate in a play. And, and as I was driving, I know where I was. I was right there at Parker Road and Flat Shoals Road. And I got a phone call, mm -hmm. and it was Bobby. Mm -hmm. And Bobby said, I just want you to know that Sonny is dead. Mm -hmm. I said, what do you mean Sonny is dead? He said he was working at a steel plant, and some steel yeah. fell on him and crushed him. Jesus. So had I not yeah. stayed and took the picture, All right. I would regret today that I didn't stay long enough. And then after we left Orangeboro, Kentucky, we were coming down Mount Eagle, and that's coming from Nashville back down to Chattanooga. If you've ever been down Mount Eagle, it's a steep, steep decline. And you can't really use your brakes. You, you, you just... You, you got to put it down in a lower gear so that it will slow the vehicle down. And, and my cousin Aubrey and Harris were arguing back and forth about how to drive the car. And they, they woke me up, and I woke up, and I began to say, well, Lord, if it's this day, I'm going. I'm going back to sleep. And if we go off the cliff, we off the cliff, and I won't know anything about it. Then in about... 2012 or so, we were coming back from West Point, you know, the military college, university, whatever you call it, academy, I think is proper name. We were coming through West Virginia, and it was late at night, and the fog was so heavy, I couldn't see any farther from here to right along here in front of the car. It was raining and everything, and we were going down a decline. And Horace was up front with me. And he said, all you got to do is stay in the middle lane. And I said to Horace, I don't see a middle lane. He said, don't go to the right because we're going to go off the cliff. And I began to pray. I said, Lord, I've lived a pretty good life, and I've had a good life, and, and, and it's been fruitful and, and so forth. I'm retired now and everything, but, but I got two children in the back. And I said, Lord, they have not had a longevity. They have not had an opportunity to live as long as I have. I said, Lord, get us down this mountain, not for me but just for these two children that's in the back. I think one might have been about three, the other might have been four or five or something like that. They were young children, babies, basically. And I don't know what happened, y'all, other than the fact that God took up control mm -hmm. over that vehicle and brought us down oh, yes. that mountain. Right. I'm telling y'all that 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 that, that I was ready if that would have been the time I had to go. I, I was ready, but the reason I didn't want to go was not so much for me, but I just thought about the life of those young people that was in the back 
of the car. So my first point is, let us consider the path of death. The path of life, rather. Let's consider the path of life. First, I want to look at the, the beautifulness of life. You know, um, when a child is born, most of the time, people are so excited about a child coming into the world. And, uh, and, and they can be so excited that some will want to be there in the room so they can see the child being birthed. And, and, and the other uh, family members, a lot of times, will be rushing to the hospital and, and they want to see the child. They, they can't wait, uh, although they already know that it's a boy or it's a girl, but they're excited about either seeing that little girl or seeing that little boy. They're just, they just excited about it. And then eventually they take the child home and and, and after a, a while, and sometimes, you know, back in the old days, you know, they, they would make the, the, the mother stay in the house uh, a few weeks. But now, it, it, you know, it's a matter of days, and they they already out. Uh, yeah. I don't know why they don't do that no more now. But uh, they get the child, and they get them out, and they wrap the child up. And y'all y'all know what to do when you get somewhere. Uh, everybody's standing with excitement, just waiting uh, for you to take that blanket off that child and so you can look at the child. Everybody's waiting in that anticipation. They, they want to see what the child looks like. They want to see who does it look like. Uh, can I get a witness here? <laughs> they they want to know, does it look like his mama? <laughs> does it look like his dad? Now, it look like the mama, they all right. Uh, but it doesn't have any features of that dad. Uh, somebody's going to be wondering, uh, whose child is it? Y'all hear me in this morning. Uh, can I get a witness here? Amen. So finally, they, they, they take the blanket off. And they look at the child. If the child is cute, everybody's excited. They say, oh, what a pretty baby. They just, oh, they just want to hug it. They want to kiss on them little cheeks and, and everything. But if the child is not cute, <laughs> can I say what I want to say here? No. I'm going to say it anyway. If the child is ugly, they will say, he or she is so precious. That's all they're going to say. Yeah. Yeah, just to say that, 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 they are, that they are precious uh, and, and everything. So, that, you know, people, well, but I'm going to tell y'all something. I don't care how the child looks. The parents are proud yeah. of that child. Amen. Now, it, it, you know, one of the things that, that, that I, I, I'm more into now than I was when my children were born, when, when, when my grandchildren are born, I, I basically what I'm doing, I'm, I'm looking at the fingers and the hands and uh, the same they got all of the thing, and fingers and everything. I'm looking at the toes and making sure they got toes and everything, making sure they got arms, legs and all of that, and they got ears and, and, and everything. And uh, so, so, you know, after uh, looking at all of that, uh, I began to say, thank you, Lord, uh, you know, that at least they came in, I don't care if they're ugly or whatever, but at least they got all of their limbs. They got yeah. everything to have a good start. Yeah. And, and, and you know, I, I don't know about y'all, but I watched these uh, these prom, uh, promos uh, by the Shriners Hospital, and I and I see them saying, give $19 a month. Uh, and they have some children who don't have but one arm. Uh, they got one, some children only got one leg and everything. And those children seem to be just as happy as they can be because they teach them uh, that they may not have been born with both arms, but they can teach them how to be able to uh, work and operate in life uh, with that, uh, what we would consider as a handicap, but they are just as happy as they can be and they be saying, thank you for your $19 a month, thank you for making it possible and then around Christmas time, they, they loaded them up and they were going in the home to, to vans, in vans to go home to visit the family and they was thanking everybody who had made the contribution, so it was possible for them to go home. But what I'm trying to tell you that God has blessed us uh, with every grandchild and child we had uh, that they had all of their limbs. Uh, and then when I think about Eddie, y'all, uh, he had a problem with his heart, uh, but you couldn't look at it. And tell that anything was wrong with him. He looked like a, a, a healthy child. He looked like everything was going on. So what I'm trying to tell you is life is beautiful. And, and, and everything that, uh, but, but there is a briefness of life. Yes. Yes. When we come into this world, uh, we come in here on our way out. Amen. Yes. Amen. 
It used to be said that you here today, gone tomorrow, here this morning, gone this afternoon. But I stopped by to tell you, you're here this morning and you're gone this morning. Yeah. Yeah. It just seemed like life is so quick. Somebody would say when somebody passed that they would they would say, Well, I just saw them last week. I, I just saw them the other day. And they looked like everything was all right. But my, uh, my, my uncle Fred said one time, he said, looks are deceiving. Yes. Yes. There are people walking around with high blood pressure. And they don't even know it. Uh, and there are some who know that they got high blood pressure, but you can't look at them and tell that there's anything wrong with them. They look like everything is normal and, and, and everything, but life is short. Uh, and so I'm just trying to tell you today, uh, every day that you get up, uh, every day that you can open up your eyes, uh, you ought to give the Lord thanks uh, because you didn't have to get up. He didn't have to let you up. Uh, you might be in pain, but, but nevertheless, Lord, the God that we serve, allowed us to get up one more time. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you. You know, every time that, uh, yes. that you have some yes. kind of outpatient surgery or something, and, and, and they put you out, uh, and, and you know that uh, you don't know what they're doing to you. You don't know what's going on. Uh, you're out. You don't even know what's going on. And I don't know how close we are to death uh, when they put us out under anesthesia. I don't know. Uh, uh, and, and you're hoping that they're going to bring you back uh, when that happens. Uh, uh, you sign all these papers saying that if they make a mistake, they may not bring you back and, and, and all of this kind of stuff. Can I get a witness here? Yes. Life is short. A few weeks ago, a friend of mine Jesus. went back home to West Virginia to bury his mama. mama. And before Jesus. he could bury his mama, his daddy died. Oh, well, he came home last Saturday night. Got up, went to church, Jesus. came home Tuesday, went to male chorus rehearsal. Wednesday, I believe it was, he was watching TV. And I think I got the story right. He stood up and he fell out. Jesus. Flatlined two times the other day. My Lord. Last night I got a report that there's some brain activity. So there's some hope there. But what I'm trying to tell you that, uh, that, that he was going home to see his, his uh, about his mother and then his daddy passed and everything. And, and I'm not sure what all of that has done to his body uh, and everything. I don't know what all of that may have done to him. But what I'm trying to tell you, y'all, that life is short. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not only Grief, but life is bitter. Sometimes there are some good times mm -hmm. and there are some bad times yes. in life. Yes. And somebody called it sometimes we'll say it's bitter sweet. Mm -hmm. Well, my notes say we must consider its harshness. We must consider its heaviness because life gets heavy every once in a while. Yes. We must consider its helplessness. And I guess, let me go back to Kobe for just a moment. I guess one of the reasons why when I more heard about the accident, it kind of registered with me because the other day I found out the airport that he was taken off from in California. And I was telling Kobe, I said, don't you remember that airport? And she said, no, I don't remember. But in in July 2001, we went to California to visit her brother. The other sister came from Warren, Ohio. We flew into LAX, and she flew into John Wayne, and that was the airport where Kobe took off. So we drove from Anaheim up to, to, to John Wayne Airport, and, and, and when, when they mentioned John Wayne, I, I had never flown in or out. From there, but I knew the name. I had been there, so that just added a little bit more of a harshness. And thinking about 
what had happened, how I even, though I don't know Kobe, but, but was able to connect with some of the points yeah. where he was. But when you think about it, you say his daughter was lost in that. Say, I don't see no good in that. Well, let me bring them. You might not see it as being good. But let me tell you one thing that I see that's good in that situation. She does not have to grieve right. over the loss of her dad. Right. The rest of her sisters and brothers or whatever, they're going to have to grieve over his loss. They, she doesn't have to grieve about it because she is gone with him. My second point, let us consider the promise of death. Death has some promises. Yes, what are the promises, Sandler? Death is a fact. Yes, and we acknowledge it. It's going to happen. Yes. Unless the Lord come and take us out of this world, death is something we cannot avoid. Yes. All right. yes. All right. let, me, let me just say it this way. Many times when you you're going to go to the doctor, you make something called a what? Appointment. An appointment. Okay. Sometimes things come up and you have to change your appointment. Yeah. Or you might have to cancel it. And sometimes they'll tell you they want you to do it within 72 hours prior to the, to the time that you were scheduled to do it. Sometimes you may not be able to do it. So, so they'll tell you, well, we're going to have to charge you because we done blocked off this time for you. And so forth. But let me tell you that on your appointed time for your yes. death, yes. you can't reschedule your appointment. Yes. Amen. And, and, and you know, the thing is, you can't pick where you're going to leave from. Right. And my brother in law would say, fly in the LAX. I mean, he said, don't fly in the LAX. He's why I pick you up anyway. But I want you to come in, John Wayne. It's a little bit uh, easy to get here and out of that. Well, I, I can't decide. Where I'm gonna be. All right. Now, if I have my druthers, as the old folk would say, I would rather be laying in bed yeah. and just sleep away. Sleep away. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yesterday, right here in in City of Carnage, a lady was on the access road yeah. on Irish Drive, somewhere around Longhorns. I don't know what happened. Shannon got one story, but I ain't, I ain't heard that, so I can't say it's sufficient, so I won't say that. But somehow she lost the control of a, well, I don't say it was she, uh, uh, lost the control, the person lost the control of the car and left from the uh, Irish job, uh, drive, went out on I-20, hit a 62-year-old woman, and she passed. Oh, now, now, I don't know where the lady was coming from. But I'm sure she didn't have no idea that when she got on the east side mm -hmm. of West Avenue, this car was going to come out of nowhere. I'm and hit her. She didn't plan that. Mm -hmm. She had somewhere on her mind that she was, she was planning to go. So death is a fact. And, 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 and um, on Friday, after I finished the committal service, for the deputy, we, we, we was taking Harris out for his 83rd birthday, and so we were going to meet at Longhorn, and, uh, and they kept blowing up my phone because I was late getting there and everything, so I finally I finally got in. I didn't get a chance to change my clothes and, 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 and none of that, so y'all uh, y'all probably see it later, but, but I got a new uniform now, and uh, uh, so when I'm working with the sheriff's office on official duty like that, I got a special uniform that I can wear. It's got a white coat, black pants, and a and a smoky the bear hat. <laughs> so so I didn't get a chance to chance to change the clothes up before I went in the Longhorns herb. And, and I go in Longhorns, I got on this smoky the bear hat and this white coat and these black pants, and, and you ought to saw folks stop eating <laughs> when I walked in. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, 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 you know, it, it was kind of a tension grab grabber. But we were there to celebrate Horace's birthday. And, and Horace now has began to talk more about death than he used to talk about. He talks about it a lot, but he, he has this little joke that he tells me. He said, if I see death coming, uh -oh. 
I'm going to take off running. Yeah. <laughs> and I tell him, well, I don't care how much you run. And he jogs, or well, maybe not jog, but he walks pretty much every day. I said, I don't care what kind of shape you're in. You cannot outrun death. Well, let me tell y'all something else that you might not understand. Death is a friend. And it can also be an enemy. But let's look at it for being a friend. How is death a friend? Death would take you away from all of your trouble. Can I get a witness now? You know what? I, I, I've been in the funeral home a lot, James, and, and I've seen people in caskets and, and uh, uh I have never seen them get a water bill <laughs> at the casket. Mm -mm. Never seen nobody give them a, 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 a gas bill or a light bill or, or whatever. And they reach in their pocket and pull out the debit card and pay it and then send the folk on their way. I've never seen that. Mm -hmm. So death will free us from that. Mm -hmm. Can I get a witness here? Yes. So death will take us out of our suffering. Now, many times when we see people who are suffering, we don't want to let them go. Why? Because we're selfish. We don't want them to leave us behind. But after a while, after we see them suffering for so long, we finally get to a point where we will say, I don't want to see them in that condition. So we will just say, Lord, they're in your hand. Death is a finish. And we, when we have films, most of the time we celebrate. Yes. Not the death, but we celebrate the life yes. of the person. Mm -hmm. And you go to a funeral because you had some connection with their life. Either you knew some of the family or you knew the person individually. That's why you are there because of the fact mm -hmm. that you have some connection. Third point. Let us consider the place of eternity. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Wow. As I said earlier. We come into this world knowing, should be knowing, maybe not as a baby you don't, but you eventually learn, that this is not your home. Amen. Now, when we go and travel, we stay in a hotel, we, some of y'all want five stars and, and, and whatever and everything, so you get a five star, you want certain things to happen in that room, you want certain kind of service and everything, but you're not planning to live that. And sometimes, to be honest with some of us, we demand stuff in the hotel that we don't even have at home. You're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. Mm -hmm. You don't have no room service <laughs> at home. <laughs> and, then, and then you tell the folk, change my sheets every day. Mm -hmm. You don't change your sheets every day at home. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Amen. But you be demanding that. You want that to happen. You want, you want because you first thing you say, well, I'm paying for this room, and, and I'm paying to have this kind of service and everything. So, 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 so sometimes uh, it, we need to understand that we're not here to stay. We're here for a temporary time. And we believe that, that, that it's a better place to go after this life. Because if we didn't, we wouldn't spend all the time we spend trying to praise the Lord, lift up his name, and, and, and give him praise and everything. But as I move on to a close, Job says in verse number one, he said, man that is born of a woman is of a few days. Now, I don't know why Job wrote it like this. I don't know why he said man that is born of a woman. And to my knowledge, that's the only way I know you can come. Unless God does some miraculous thing to, to bring you here. So to me, he's telling us that all of us, no matter whether you're a woman, whether you're a man, a child, or whatever, he said man that is born, meaning all of us are of a woman, is of a few days. And those days are full of trouble. 
And what you got to understand, my brothers and sisters, that, that Job here was going through some things when, when this took place in his life. You know, Satan and God had had a conversation. And, and Satan said, uh, yeah, uh, 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 well, actually, God did it. He said, he asked Satan, have you considered my servant Job? He said, yeah, I don't thought about it. But you got to hedge around it. And I can't get to him. God said, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'll take the head around. The only thing you can do, you can't do, you can't kill him. Do whatever you want to. So Job is going through all of this suffering. So he began to reflect over his life. And he's saying, huh, man that is born of a woman is of a few days, and those days are full of trouble. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but some of my days are good days. And if I be honest about it, most of our good days outweigh my, my bad days. So I won't do what? I won't complain. Somebody here today ought to be able to, to think about the goodness of the Lord. Yes. You know, I know you got some pain every once in a while. You might have some pain every day, but the Lord is still Mm -hmm. Allowed you to get up. Yes. Yes. Thank you. The Lord Thank still you. allowed you yes, he did. to go on yes. your way. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know anybody that yes, feels like they want to feel all the time, but but I stopped by to remind you today uh, yes. that the Lord said to her that, yes. that, that, that through his word, through Job, uh, that, that you were born of a woman and you got a few days, uh, yes. and they full of trouble. Uh, but then he went on to say here, he said, uh, 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 around verse number 10, he said, but a man dies, uh, and he wastes away. Mm -hmm. And then he also said, if a man dies, will he live again? Yes. Mm -hmm. So Job was not able to get the answer to that question. But I stopped by to tell you, it was on a hill called Calvary. Yes. One Friday evening, your Lord and my Lord was upon Calvary's cross. Right. The Bible said that he never uttered a murmuring word. Yes. But the Bible said that he died, uh, and on the third day morning, he, he got up with all power yes. Yes. in his hand. Yes. So the answer to the question, if a man dies and he believes in Jesus Christ as yes. his personal Savior, yes. he shall Thank you. rise again. Thank you. But when I read, read this text, y'all, uh -huh. I began to have a little trouble with what I saw here in Job because when we were reading about the tree, say you could cut the tree down. Mm -hmm. And all the tree got to do is just smell. Yes. Wow. The sin of God. Right. And it'll come back. Yeah. One morning before Chandler got out of high school, I heard this noise. And uh, I thought something fell off the wall. I couldn't see nothing that had fallen. So I didn't know what it was that made the noise. And I got out and got ready to take her to school. I still hadn't noticed anything. And Father Chandler said, Bobby, you see that tree? It fell in the street. It was our tree. And there's a neighbor of ours usually come by about that time of morning. But either she had already gone by and the tree fell. So since it was in the street, I called the city of Conyers. And they came with their chainsaws and they cut it up. Got it out of the street so people could pass up and down the street. Sometime later, I found a tree cutting person. I don't know what you call tree cutters or whatever. I had him to come and cut the tree down. And he cut the tree down and he left a stump. About that high. And I said, you ain't going to get the stump. He said, no, all we do is cut the limbs down. You have to get somebody else. 
to come and remove the stump. So I said, okay, the tree dead anyway, so put, ain't gonna matter. The stump is there, maybe we can find something to sit on it or somehow. <laughs> you know, it makes a few out of it. But it kept raining and everything. Winter came and everything. Summer came, spring came, it rained. Now that tree is almost like it was before we ever cut it down. So when I read this text, I could identify with that because I knew that that all the tree got to do is just smell the scent of water and life will come back into the tree. But he didn't do that for us. He cut us down. He let us fade. He let us go and die because he said, I want to make you better than the tree. Well, you ain't letting us stay here. That's because I got a better place for you. Yes. That tree going to rot. Yes. It's going to die and it ain't going to never come up no more. Mm-hmm. But I got a better place. Yes. I got a place for you. Yes. You're going to live with me eternally. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Finally. A friend of mine told me a story last week. He said several years ago, he was living in Macon, Georgia, and uh, he had to preach, I believe, in Chicago. And so he came to Atlanta, flew to Atlanta, and they were going to take him to Chicago through Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. So the plane got ready to leave Atlanta. And he thought they were going to be going on to Dallas. And then they were going to take off from Dallas and, and go to Chicago. I don't know why they went that route. But they had gotten out almost to the runway. And they turned around. And they said, we're going to have a delay. He had to get there. But they came back to the gate. And he wondered, everybody's wondering, what, what's, what's wrong with the plane? Did the engine go out? Did, did something happen to the engine? Did something happen to the equipment? Was some of the gauges messed up? What, what happened uh, to the plane? And it turns out with nothing wrong with the plane. They hadn't left anybody. But why did they turn around and come back to the gate? Right. If nothing was wrong with the plane, if nothing, mm-hmm. nobody had gotten left that they had to come back and get. Right. What they found out when they finally got to Dallas and they got ready to get off the plane, I think that's when they told them what was wrong. The reason why they went out to take off and they, the reason why they turned around and came back was because the seat that the pilot was in was not comfortable. Now I think y'all say, well, wait a minute. I don't think that's no big deal. He should have flew in that seat. But if y'all think about it, he said that when he got up to the front and the, and the captain of the, of the plane was standing up there. He said, I thank you that you got a comfortable seat. Mm-hmm. Because if the pilot was not comfortable, mm-hmm. then the flight could have went, they could have, or everybody could have went down. So I don't know about y'all, but when I fly, mm-hmm. I want the pilot uh-uh. to be comfortable. Amen. When I'm riding in a car, I want the driver to be comfortable. Because they are responsible for Getting me where I'm trying to go. I know God has got it in hand, but I want that person to be comfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Death is not so bad All right. if you're ready. Mm-hmm. And every day of your life, mm-hmm. you should be preparing mm-hmm. to get ready mm-hmm. to meet Jesus. Yes. Amen. 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 You get up every morning with praise in Amen. your heart. You go to bed at night with praise on your lips. 
tell the Lord thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Now I, 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 I want to tell you that, 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 that if I leave today I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Because I know who I belong to. Yes. I know where I'm going when I leave this life. Yes. I'm going to go and live with Jesus. Yes. I don't have to worry about nothing else. No more pains, no more concerns, and nothing because I know where I'm going. Yes. 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 And I know who's going to be there, who's going with me, and also Amen. who's going to be there when I get there. Hallelujah. Everybody standing. Hallelujah. Death is not so bad. Amen. If you are ready. Back in the old days in the Baptist church, they used to sing a song that says, I'm going home on the morning train. The evening train would be too late. But, but, but people don't be lining up. They lining up. They get on the train. Now, if the Lord says that it's, you know, for me to live a little while longer, that's fine. But if you're ready for me to go, I'll, I'll say, Lord, here I am. You can take me. Today, we extend an invitation to you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And if you already have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, but you don't have a covering, we extend to you an opportunity to join the Church of New Beginning where you can start a new day every day. You can, you can be welcome to your first day of your new beginning right here at Church of New Beginning. If that's you today, will you come? And if you want to come as a candidate for baptism, you can do that. You can come by letter, Christian experience, or come under watch care, whichever way the, the Lord leads you to come. If this is the church that you want to be a part of, you can come now. Is there one today? Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Praise God. From whom all blessings flow. Amen. At this time, if you need an envelope to give, you can.